and welcome to GDB World. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how we can make the stylized coin material in Southern's Designer. This will be a two-part series. In today's part, we'll be taking a look at the overall setup of the coins to give us a good foundation to work with when we come to the tiling and diffuse stage. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, subscribe, and with that, let's get straight into the video. To start us out, we're going to be having a look at the coin base. So this is three shape nodes. Uh, one's going to be the back border and then the other two are going to serve as a bit of a detailing for the coin itself. The goal here is to essentially retain the black background. So you'll see me use the invert grayscale node a couple of times just to maintain that background colour. Right now we're just inverting the shape and that's going to serve as our mask and then we're using histogram scan to get the actual height that we're looking for for this type of shape. And then we're going to blend it again with Max Lighten to give us our sort of final shape there. And then just hook it up so that we can sort of see it in the viewer. Make any adjustments to the histogram range if you want to adjust the height. And then we want to blend in just another uniform colour just to further enforce that black background. Uh, just so that we don't have any lighter greys pulling through. Then we can move on to creating our coin rim. So this is just going to be a sort of splatter circular sort of cut that's just going to be uh, sort of subtracted from the original shape so we're just using a waveform and then we're going to be using a splatter circular and I just want to increase the scale so that they sort of merge a little bit and we get this nice sort of wavy effect here then we're using a non-uniform blur grayscale blend it for itself just to blow out the values the sort of balloons everything a little bit and then we can use a curve to further control that and fine tune it Then it's into a histogram range, just bring that range down to like something like 0 0.03 and then we can blend it in with our final shape, just subtracting it, just to remove those uh, nice smooth values out of it. And just adjusting the ambient inclusion a little bit, just so that I can see it a little bit easier. And then we just create another blend node here, and this is just going to be called the blended details node. It's kind of like... I guess like an output node that I'll move into once I finish the skull detail. For the skull detail it's just nice and simple so again we're going to do sort of something similar as we did before just create a bunch of shapes so these are going to serve as the eyes and just use transform 2d put it 0.15 and then negative 15 for the other eye and then we can blend those together add linear dodge and then we just want to do another disc and this is going to serve as the sort of uh, skull portion and then we can do a multi-directional warp to start moulding the shape into a bit more of a skull set the directions onto two and then just change the warp direction so it's going upwards and we'll just put the intensity onto something like 73, 75, somewhere in there And what I was looking at here was the sort of top portion. It sort of looks more like an eyebrow, so I was quite happy with that. Then we move into a directional warp, and this gets used of a gradient linear 3. We just tile that gradient linear. And we're just using the high points of the tiled parts of the gradient linear to create teeth for the bottom of the skull there. We just get this as close to the top as we can. And then we can blend that in with the original shape with a multiplier and you'll see it sort of chops off the top bit so we're left with just the eyebrows and the bottom portion and then into a non-uniform blur again just to give us a bit of height value to it playing with a intensity of 12.56 will work nicely and then we can use an add linear dodge and then blend that in with our eyeballs just making sure we bevel those before we do so just to ensure it's not super sharp Next we're working on the nose, so just rotate it 45 degrees and then we're going to just chop off half of it so we're left with a triangle. And we do that with a gradient. We can move into a bevel, that just gives us our nice soft edges again. 
and then transform 2D. We're just going to decrease it, divided by 2, remove the tiling and just lower it a little bit so that it's in position. And then we're just going to blend that together with our skull. And that's just going to be another subtract again. Then we'll be heading for warp, multi direction warp again. Um, just set it onto something like 4 to 3.5, somewhere around there. And then we're going to do a directional warp finally with a pearl and noise just to really uh, apply a bit more stylization to the skull itself. Lastly, it's our Transform 2D. Make sure we remove that tiling, divide it by 2 just so that it's actually going to fit into our coin. And then we can use a histogram range to control the heights and set that to the output. And then it gets put into a multiply blend. Then we move on to divots. We're going to be using the FX map for this one just to create a nice even banded circle. So this just uses the iterate node. And we're going to be using one of the base shapes. You set the iterations to something like 19 so you can see it easily. Make sure the node's set to grayscale. And then we're going to decrease that luminosity to 0.02. And then you'll give us this nice banded circle here. And then we're going to just start warping that. Uh, we're going to use a pillar noise. Decrease the scale a little bit. And then we're just going to blur that out. Finally we can invert it and then we can put it into a histogram scan. It's just going to play as the mask. And then we're going to blend those two together. And then that makes us retain that black background again. Finally we want to create our output node. It's just going to be a tile random just so that we can just splatter it around a little bit. Nothing too fancy with these values. Just pick anything, whatever looks good. Then we can blend that in with our blend node and then we just want to create a quick mask as well with histogram scan. And we'll just cut off any excess that we don't want. Now we move into the shape extrude node. So this is essentially what's going to give us our coin. So we can just sort of play with what angle it's going to be, anything you really want. Um, but it's important we use that mask we created before just so it keeps those details as sharp as possible. Just change the position and then again we're going to use a non-uniform blur. So this is where we're going to sort of prep and highlight those edges because again it's going to be stylized. We want to make sure those edges are as bright as possible. So we're going to do that for normal map and then we're going to use a curvature smooth this is the multiplier but you'll notice it starts making the shape a little bit too dark so we want to make sure we put auto levels in there just to balance it out a little bit and that's essentially coin one done then we just need to duplicate the setup to create our two other coin variations Go ahead and adjust the height and depth as well as the position. Just anything will do. You can do more than just three. I just liked three because it just seems a bit simple number and then it doesn't use up too much memory on your graph. And then all that's left to do is to create some additional designs to go on the coins themselves. So in this case I'm using a bitmap and I'm just converting it to a grayscale. We'll just make sure we invert that as well. So we want to maintain that black background again. And then we're using a non-uniform blur, same one as we used before, just changing the angle a little bit. And it's going to be 0 0.63. And then we're going to bevel that to give us a nice transition. And then finally we can add our wear and tear. So it's just a multi-direction warp with nice clouds.
And then we're going to do another directional warp. And this one appeal and noise just to soften up the shape a little bit so it's not so hard. And we use transform 2D. So again, just divide it by two and remove the tiling. And then we just prepare the output node, which is just going to be another histogram range again. Lower that down a bit. Something that re resembles the same as what our skull is at. And then we can blend that in together as a multiplier. And with that, that brings part one to a close. In part two, we will look at the tiling and diffuse workflow, as well as some additional polishing elements. If you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day.